What up, guys? What's happening? Welcome back to Creating Space here in the heart of Charlotte, the beautiful Wheelhouse Media Studios. I'm so excited to be joined by the people's champ, <laughs> champ number one, voted on by her community. You know, we started this incredible aspect of allowing you guys, the listenership, to vote for you to tell us the stories that you want to see on the show. And you guys, Emily Breeze's community showed up big. You beat out Steph Curry, which is amazing. And I'm super excited to have Emily on the show. Obviously, we got a lot to talk about, but Emily, um, you are the people's champ, people's champ number one. I'm excited <laughs> to have you on the show. Welcome to Creating Space. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is so exciting. I am just ready to have the opportunity to talk. Yeah, you got a lot to talk about. Uh, first thing we gotta we gotta go towards are these internet trolls that have come hard at you uh, over the last couple of days, and you have really, like a champion, run at them back. And the post you made just the other day was really impactful. Um, what happened? What like break this down for us? What exactly is going on? Okay, yeah. So internet trolls have kind of come into my life since being pregnant with my first over four years ago, and so I was working out with this big old basketball belly and everybody's like, wait, what? What is she doing? She, like, it looks crazy. It's kind of taboo, right? And sure. they are interested, but there's so many people that will trash talk and say the craziest, meanest stuff as far as like, if you really wanted an abortion, you could go to the doctor or what? yes, you guys should prevent, you know, having babies if you don't want one. I mean, the craziest stuff that really gets you heated and gets you upset as a person. And so, Early on, my husband and I just kind of turned all that off and we were like, listen, we know what we're doing. You know, we have full confidence in our relationship and sure. our doctor's relationship and our pregnancy, all this stuff. Let's just rock and roll and just be us. And so, you know, that kept continuing on like throughout all of my pregnancies because mama was not going to stop working out. Okay. Yeah. This is all I know and right. what I love and believe in. So sure. I just kept going with it and the trolls kept on coming. But Honestly, for every troll, there's probably like 5,000 awesome, sure. really cool people that sure. relate and support. So that's cool. But then here recently, after my third kid in three years, people are coming after me like, whoa, are you a little bit sad that, you know, you don't look like a trainer anymore mm. or you don't have a six pack or you haven't bounced back? And what I say to them is like, hey, I'm bouncing forward, right? Because sure. I am so proud of everything that I've accomplished in these three years. Like having a baby is a miracle, right? It's like yeah. the best workout, the best training, all this stuff. And like all my mom's scars and battle wounds are something I'm proud of. And I'm going to show off. So I'm going to keep rocking a sports bra, Love even it. with saggy skin. Love it. People's <laughs> champ. Let's go. What a Let's great, go. what a great start. Obviously the engagement on that post was huge. You had so many women warriors coming out and supporting you, women and men. Yes. Um, and, it, and it's definitely cool to see you continue to be yourself no matter what people have to say off the, off the show today, you were talking about when people hate, it only fuels you and, and propels you forward. Um, <laughs> so obviously that was useful in your athletic endeavors. Yes. Um, you were track and field and basketball player in college? Yes, yep. Wow. Um, at Winthrop University, which is right down in Rock Hill. Cool. Yes. Very cool. And which one, which sport was your favorite? Which one were you better at? Um, honestly, you wanted to, me to get really deep into this. So I chose Winthrop and I chose to do two sports because my high school boyfriend was an all-American basketball player. He went to Duke. He huh. was the biggest name you could think of. And I was like, Ugh. I'm so competitive. I'm Who's gonna that go guy? JJ Reddick. Whoa, yes. word. <laughs> He's got a great podcast, by the way. He does. And so I was like, you know what? I am totally gonna go play two sports in college because yeah. I mean, fuel my competitive sure. drive. And so that was a D1 school that was gonna let me do both of those. Yeah. And there we go. Did you do all four years as a multi No, I athlete? only played basketball my first year and then I ran track. Cool. Yes. What was your what was your event? Eight hundred, the mile, and then a lot of cross country and more distance. Wow. Yes. Okay. So that that is uh, the reason you have all this ambition and drive. You know, I have this theory that actually of all the athletes, I think the individual athletes are actually the most disciplined. I'm sure people will come at me in that. Um, <laughs> but I've seen so many retired team sport athletes fall off of their uh, of their regimen. I it's it's you'll be hard pressed to see an individual athlete really lose the juice, um, which is kind of what helped you sort of serve you and build this platform. How did this all begin? This sort of mom belly CrossFit <laughs> athlete, like let's start there. Yeah, so I mean, just after college, I was looking for 
fitness and something to do because it's been my entire life. Yeah. And so that kind of threw me into CrossFit. And I just connected with some other women who were college athletes, Olympians, all of that. And we were like, let's go after this. Let's go compete. And Those so, women are here in Charlotte. And they're here in Charlotte. Wow. Yes. And they're moms too, yeah. right? So um, we just put a team together and we competed at the CrossFit Games, which is like the highest level um, for the world. And so we competed two years in a row. And cool. then I had started having babies. But. So wait, how do you, excuse my ignorance. Yes. I like the CrossFit routines, but how do you get to the CrossFit games? You have to qualify. So okay. back then you would go, um, you would have an open that everybody worldwide would compete in and you would like put your scores in and there'd be like a database. Uh, okay. And the top maybe 20 teams or 20 individuals would then go meet at like um, a sanctioned event. And so you would have judges and it would be kind of within like your district or, you know, where you okay. live. Okay. And so we were always like kind of east or southeast or whatever. Well, it's not um, fair. Your team is like Olympians and track and field athletes. <laughs> and there, but there are so many great athletes all throughout CrossFit. So okay. I think it really, you know, set up right. So anyways, sure. and then we went and um, competed in the CrossFit game. So people would travel from all over the world and compete at kind of like the top prize for that sport. Wow. Yeah. And so you were a part of that team. You were competing individually. Um, it's So it's three women and three men And when you were competing wow. at, when I was. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. And so along the way, you're, you're building a CrossFit as CrossFit's really at an inflection point and taking off. And then it wasn't really until you had the basketball belly, as you say, <laughs> as a mom, throwing snatches of over your head where really, I guess, the internet started to to catch you. you, you then go on to Us Weekly, you're in Shape Magazine, you're on the Today Show. What, what was that time of your life like? <laughs> yeah, it was wild. But honestly, I thought it was such a great time to put fitness on a platform because that is why I started doing all of this. It was kind of like a daily diary for myself. Okay. And I was just kind of writing about what I was doing, you know, and I could always look back on it. So it was so daily it was a, diary. So it was a blog, like well, on Facebook? it was Facebook Instagramming. Yeah, Instagram. so like mini blogging, right? Or yeah. micro blogging, however yeah. they say it. And so I was just posting every day. And then I think once one publication kind of catches wind of that, sure. they kind of all, you know, grab on. So who was so, the first publication to pick you up? Gosh, I think it was Us Weekly. Yeah. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Cool. I, yeah, but um, they just all kept coming. And Did I, it come as a form of an email? Were, um, were they commenting yes, on emails. your stuff? Yeah, yeah, commenting on our stuff and cool. emails on Instagram. And um, But again, I loved it because I wanted to put fitness on a platform yeah. and just realize that pregnancy is not an illness. It's not a disease. Wow. And so you don't have to just like, stop doing what you're doing, you sure. know? Um, if you have a normal pregnancy and you've got great communication and relationships with a doctor, I think it's fine to continue doing what you're used to, you know? Sure, so you had no fear about continuing with these practices like during pregnancy. Never. You basically just got the okay from the doctor and let's yes. go 100 miles an hour. Yes, and it never crossed my mind. And you know, I do talk with a lot of women and friends and they kind of always have that little bit of fear. And so I think it was, a good thing and a bad thing for me because I try to, I'm just kind of like, let's go, like tunnel vision. I'm just sure. like living my life. And I think that's great because you aren't overthinking things. Sure. You know? Um, I've got to keep my life small or yeah. else I get anxious. Right, you know? it, absolutely. I, if I don't have a regimen and a daily routine, yeah. it's trouble. Like put down the Google, right? <laughs> yeah, put down real. comparing, like real. just, yeah. feel, like I, I really would just feel my like how I feel. And Love that. Yeah, super connected to your body and yes. connected to your husband as well. He's yes. working out with you. Montel was a basketball player at Elon. Yes. Right? So yep. you guys do workouts together. We do. He can't get outworked. <laughs> Come on, Montel. I, I, I outwork him. Do you? And he would admit You got it. an engine. If he was sitting right here, he'd admit it. Would he really? <laughs> he would, yeah. I like that respect. <laughs> so very cool. Us Weekly, right? Yes. Uh, Today Show. What was the Today Show like? Is it as cool as you would imagine it to be behind the scenes? It is, yes. Really? I feel like every, and I was like on Fox News and all that stuff, it's just so hyped up. But sure. I think like when you really have a passion for what you're talking about, like, I don't know, it wasn't scary. It wasn't like all these big flashy lights. It was just like talking and communicating, just like we are here, you know? And like you're really just trying to put out there um, what you believe in, what you stand for. Yeah, so with this new platform, what are you trying, What at the time now and at that point, what were you trying to preach or infuse into the women that 
were connected to you or interested in what you had going on? Yeah, so I think it's a combination of a lot of stuff, but it starts with health is your wealth. And my dad would always tell me that, you know, growing up. So my parents were divorced and um, all through high school, I lived with my dad and he's a big runner and we would like run together. We'd work out together and we'd always talk. And like that just always sticks out. Like anytime I'm in like kind of a rough spot or whatever, health is your wealth. And I know it's, you know, it's cliched and people say it all the time, but it means so much to me because we're so close. And then sure. on top of that, like it is so true because one time during my pregnancies, I had a little sciatic issue and my husband would have to pick me up out of bed. Wow. And that's when I was like, probably at my lowest point where I was like, this cannot keep, ha like this sure. cannot be my new norm mm -hmm. ever. Like, what is it gonna take? Because I realized that health and fitness is my medicine, you know? And it like just gives me such a good high. It gives me just great feelings. It lets me be a good mom, a good wife, a good friend, a good everything. Yep. And so I just need a little daily dose of that every day, you sure. know? And um, so it just, sticks out to me. So health is your wealth. And I want yeah. everybody to know that it doesn't have to be CrossFit. It doesn't yeah. have to be playing at a college sport. It could be walking your dog. It could be playing at the playground. It just mm. is movement. Movement is so crucial and Love that. So, so key. You Love know? That. I got this saying, it's called count your wins. Okay. Right? We got this thing called a reticular activating system in our minds. And it's the filter, right? So the reticular activating system shows you more of what you're looking for. So for instance, um, let's say you're looking for a, a, a vehicle online, yeah. right? And you're searching like a Yukon, white Yukon. And all of a sudden you start seeing white Yukons on the highway <laughs> yes. everywhere, right? Have you ever had that happen mm -hmm. to you? So your reticular activating system filters out and shows you more of what you're looking for. So this count your wins motto that I have is all about looking for things that excite me throughout the day. Yes. And so that little workout, right, that you get squeezing in a five minute, 20 minute, 30 minute thing can actually propel you to take bigger steps to do things that might be scarier yes. on your day because you're fueling yourself with that. So I love that. But let's break down that engine. You talk about your dad and the discipline that he taught you every day, integrating that into who you are. Um, and I see you doing that with your kids. Yes. So what? let's break down that blueprint, right? So how do you teach kids from an early age this desire, deep desire to move and to be active and to have that fully integrated into their life. Right. I think it starts with you being the model first, right? Sure. So they're kind of like monkey see what monkey do, right? So I think our kids just are constantly seeing us do these workouts or move and be outside and be active. And they're encouraged to do that. They want to do that. So like my son, I mean, seriously, he like shows off by being like, I can do a burpee. You know what I mean? Really? Like he thinks that's cool, you yeah. know, as opposed to be like, I can go play a video game and beat you. Like he didn't even know what that is. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I just love that he wants to be active. He wants to explore. You know, now we live on all this like land. So he's out cool. like looking for birds and running. And um, yesterday he was hitting a uh, baseball off a tee and he was like, mom, I'm training. I'm training. And I'm like, what? Love that. I'm like, I love this kid, you know? Yeah. And he'll be like, mom, time me. I'm like walking um, on top of the rocks. And he'll be like, wait, I missed one. I got to go back. Time me again. Am I getting faster? And I'm like, this is so cool. Like, is this something that he just is? Or is it sure. because he sees that and he sees me counting down the timer and he watches me work people out and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the first time I met Bly, Bly's his name. Yes. Handsome dude. Thank you. Um, was at your Randy Moss Stacks workouts. And I got a quick little Randy Moss story. So Adam and I were talking the other day um, and I had to go out, Randy Moss, this was my idol, had to go out to his free workout at Stax with Emily Breeze. Let me go check this out. So we get to Stax and we're working out outside and it's like, a le it's a legitimate workout and there are hundreds of people here. Like yes. not, this is not a small audience that you're working out or that you're push pushing through this workout and it's Randy. Like this is a Hall of Fame wide receiver, arguably the best yes. ever. And He's pushing everybody. And there was one sequence where you had to do five burpees, sprint across a soccer field, do five more burpees, sprint back. And there was all ranges of ability levels. Oh, we have you know, some people working through obesity and then we all the way down to like former you know, pro athletes, right? So um, run across on the first set and come back and people are falling out on the ground, tired, <laughs> exhausted, yes. right? Yes. I got my hands over my head. Randy stops the entire, stop. And we were like, what? Look over at Randy and he's like, no one lay on the ground. That's weakness. Everybody stand up. And we all were like, what? He's like, everybody do five burpees. And we looked at Randy and I was like, what is he gonna make all these people laying on the ground do five burpees? So they had to do five burpees and then get up and run again. 
And at the end of it, someone else fell out again. And Randy, in Hall of Fame, Randy Moss, super intense fashion, threw his mic across the field in such like anguish and disgust. It was the, it was like the, 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 this, Awesome moment at one point to see Randy and his competitive yes. nature, right? The, yes. the Randy you see every day, that, yeah. right? Like that guy. And then at the same time, you couldn't believe that it was actually coming out in that moment. So how did that relationship with Randy form? How did that come together? Yeah, so funny story. Like my dad went to Marshall. And that's where Randy played. And as I was a little girl in middle school, I think, uh, I don't know the age difference, but anyways, I would go to his games because my dad's like, oh my gosh, Marshall got this new wide receiver. He's amazing. My dad's a diehard fan, like we're going up there. So I like truly remember cheering yeah. for this awesome all-star college player that yeah. my dad loved. And um, when I got to Charlotte, I was hosting a boot camp here and I was like really in like a parking lot of my old yoga studio. So did you know I owned a yoga studio? No, I did not Crazy, know right? Yeah. Wow. Yes. And so I started getting into um, hosting boot camps out in a parking lot and then they just started expanding and growing. I would host them one time a week, $5 a head. We were getting up to a hundred people coming out wow. and they were awesome. They were so cool. And so the owner of Stacks actually reached out to me and was like, Hey, let's, let's go bigger. Let's go, you know, make this thing huge and put Charlotte on the map. And so he's like, I want to combine you and Randy Moss and let's give it free for the people and wow. what this great facility and let's just do it big. And it was such a great relationship off the get go. Like we just sure. get, I think we get each other. Um, you know, we're both really big into our families. We're both athletes, like consistently, like, you know, he's in the gym consistently still, wow. like in the morning time at 530 when I was there training clients, he'd be there. And like, I think it just shows like, and we're both that way. It's just a consistent workout six yeah. days a week, you know? Sure. Um, so our mindsets are a lot alike. He's a great person. He's got such a big, soft heart. Of course he does. Um, and his competitive competitiveness is awesome as well that it was awesome to experience because that's what makes him great right? yes I mean, oh, you gosh. can't moss anyone without that <laughs> no right? right so you've built this huge community both in person right real significance as well as online let's talk and break down a little bit about that online community because that's your business and i'm sure that's what you're super passionate about what exactly is your online community um, in the fitness world. Yeah, so I mean, much bigger than just my Instagram platform that kind of sure. talks about my daily life. I have an online fitness platform. So it's Breeze Through Fitness. And I kind of wanted that play on words there to make fitness easy, accessible, and quicker, sure. right? So they can do it at home, at a gym, at a park. And the workouts are, you know, anywhere from like 20 to 30 minutes. And we are reaching people in so many different countries. Cool. Um, my goal this year is to get to 10,000 members. Wow. So we're really close. Um, so many really cool stories that I get to hear about cool. from women in the Middle East who reach out and say like, thank you so much for this because I'm having to go into the basement because women don't work out here. And I'm able to like watch your videos, watch the demos, follow your workout program and feel good about myself. Awesome. You know what I mean? And so they don't get to go to the gym. Or so the are YMCA. you uploading daily videos? Yes. Yeah, so How is it's that work? almost like a, like a Netflix subscription or cool. any subscription base. You pay $9.95 a month and you get a daily workout every single day and it varies. And then on top of me kind of telling what to do for the day, you can break down each movement and have like a video glossary of like, oh, I don't know what a squat is. Well, here's me showing you, kind of telling you cool. what I'm expecting and that sort of thing. Very cool. So it's fine. So how do you batch edit those? What's your process for that? Yeah, That's so cool. you have to f write the workouts, film them all, get them on the platform. Sure. We have a you know, people, a great team who, you know, uploads them and sends them out and people don't realize how much work it is oh on the back end, right? I know. It's very cool. How long yes. have you been building that um, model? This, we launched this right after um, Bly was born. Awesome. So it has been and a he's how great, old now? he's three and a half. So about three years. And then before that you were, how many years until you launched the online program? Um, well, I'd been in the fitness industry for over 10 years yeah. in all kinds of different it's ways. No overnight you know? success, is it? Oh takes my gosh. so much growing. No, yes, it takes so much work and people do, you know, I have a um, neighbor who has a younger daughter and they're like, hey, I just want to like finish college. I want to be an Instagram person, like on fitness or Yikes. something. And we're like, oh man, Yikes. there's so much, like it's hard work. Like I sure. think people, like you said, they always see like just the good stuff, which I really try to show everything about my life, you right. know, from 
my kids pooping on me at the gym <laughs> to <laughs> pulling my hair out to whatever. I mean, and, and juggling, like going to get my lashes done while holding a baby breastfeeding. And yeah. it, like life is crazy, but right. you just have to embrace it. It's and, really important for you to do that because it will drive people to want to go deeper into you, which then you open up that community and, and uh, giving them the availability to work out with you and so on and so forth. Yeah. What is the common sort of narrative or question that you see inside that community? Who is the individual who goes inside of there and what are they struggling with? Yeah, they're just struggling with like finding workouts that are gonna help them, that they're gonna see results with and that they wanna stick to, you know? So I think a lot of times fitness is like overthought, overplanned out and like, my bottom line is just movement, right? And sure. just getting functional fitness exercises and movements to the people to where they can do them everywhere and just having that easy access to where, and it needs to be fun. You know, I always tell people that like, if you go to a workout, like if I went to cycle, it's not gonna be fun for me and that's okay, I'll find something else. Cause when it's not fun, you just, you don't go. Right. You're just like, well, I don't wanna work out today. Right. You know what I mean? Doing something else with friends or whatever is gonna be your priority. But if you find the fitness that is fun, you're gonna go, I you know? So. Yeah, I love that. So moving forward, yes. your vision, you've obviously gotta have something that you're reaching for. I know you talked about a fourth kid yes. coming up. Like yes. what, what is in, uh, what's in the windshield, so to speak? What are you looking at for the next couple of years? Yeah, so the next couple of years, I wanna keep, you know, building my platform up because I love it and I love that community. I want a fourth baby. I mean, people are like really trying to jinx us and they're like, you're gonna go for four, you're gonna end up with twins. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, whatever God throws at us, I'm ready for sure. it. But I just want four. <laughs> so be good to me. Yeah. No. Um, but yeah, another baby. Um, I was telling you earlier, like I've had C-sections. So that means if you're not familiar, I know you've never been through pregnancy. Mm -mm. I am sliced and diced, cut open. All of my organs and things are sitting there on this pretty table while they're pulling the baby out. <laughs> I love your face. And that is some serious shit, you know? Wow. I mean, so my I didn't realize they put your organs on the yes. table. Yes. I mean, my husband Kidding? was like, oh, he said he could like see blood on the floor Yikes. and like towels. It was a lot for him. Yikes. But four babies is what I'm shooting for. And, and when you do have C-sections, the doctor, you know, they get to a point where they're like, I think this is probably your max and like where it's safe and that sort of thing. Sure. Because you're losing a lot of blood. Of course. Yeah. Women are amazing. I mean, you guys are incredible. That's for <laughs> Thank sure. Thank you. I mean, we all are amazing, but women and you are got awesome. you've got three kids in three years. Three kids in three years. I definitely would love to do you, you know do four, four and four, four years because I mean I want them right. And so why might as no better time than now. I'm in the trenches. Like my life is already extremely chaotic. So sure. let's add one to the fire. Um, Boot camps, you know, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that. I think we're gonna start traveling some and doing like different locations and pop-up boot camps. So I'm looking at maybe doing one to two a month and that's not necessarily just in Charlotte. So okay. everywhere. I was supposed to be in Puerto Rico um, this month earlier, but they had those earthquakes. Sure. I have a boot camp tomorrow. You should come out. Um, Where is that? It's in Noda. Cool. Um, so yeah, I just partnering up, we're doing something really cool at the Knight Stadium in March, and it's for um, a really cool nonprofit here in Charlotte. And well, let's so, talk about that, what is that? Yeah, it's called um, The Quiet Pulse. And so this lady here was like big into working out and all of a sudden she started feeling sick and the doctors told her if it wasn't for fitness, you would have died because she had a major blood clot and they are quiet sometimes, you know what sure. I mean? They'll just sneak up on you. So. We are creating awareness around this and just showing how awesome fitness is yeah. and how if you have that great foundation of health, it can help save your life, you know, sure. without you even realizing it. Um, so and, it's a boot camp in And nice so we're going to do um, a great hit workout there that I'm going to lead. And then they're going to do a yoga class afterwards. And all the money goes to that nonprofit. Sign me up. Yes, I'm right? And we'll be on those jumbotrons. And everybody out, out there walking the streets can cool. see you working out and getting it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be pretty similar, I'm sure, to the Randy Moss type workout, that yes. type of hit. Yes, that cool. kind of workout. Lots of people. So Amazing. Yeah. What, what about Montel? What, What's important for the two of you as more kids come into the scene and, and how do you guys stay connected throughout all of the things you've got going on? Yeah, I love this question because I think it's so important to keep close to each other, right? And have that balance and have that love and keep it still on fire. So we make it such a point to go on dates, mm. travel, be together, be alone. And you know, I even get people reaching out to me about that. Like, I can't believe you left your baby when we went skiing and we took our two big kids. Well, I'm like, 
guess what? We're not going to take a three-month-old out in the cold, but sure. we're still in love and parents that want to hang out. We still are parents to, you know, other kids that can go enjoy it. And our baby was with my dad who was taking great care of her. You know what I mean? So it's just like finding balance, tuning out everybody else's thoughts and opinions about you or what they think you should be doing. And you find out what works for your family, you know, because we're all so different. Um, But we really keep the fire alive by going on dates, communicating, laughing together at night, telling stories, talking about our day, Best and Best thing traveling. for my relationship is when I put my phone down. Yes. We have these no phone dates, and man, I, you know, the the worries of achievement can cloud everything, but you yes. simply put the phone away and it shifts everything. Yes. Um, so any other pro tips like that before <laughs> a young individual going to get married this year, get in the house? Yes. What are some other pro tips to keep the connection alive as uh, the relationship and life builds? Yeah, congrats to that. Um, Thank you. Just honestly, the communication part is huge. And for us, we have such a foundation um, with our relationship with God. You know, we okay. really start, um, we go to church together, we pray together, we raise our kids that way. And for us, that's super important. Sure. Um, just having a good foundation. So whatever it is that you want to do, I think just having that rock solid foundation is huge, you know, awesome. and talking about those things, you know, prior to marriage. And we went to marriage counseling. We love that because we all handle things differently right or like how we want to like fight about things or save money or whatever it is and I think it's just just to know those things up front you know that's awesome yeah I I don't think a lot of people will talk about going to marriage counseling or counseling at all so opening up about that is really important Um, how many years have you guys been involved in that so we did that prior to getting married we we don't currently do it but I thought it was like, oh, we don't need this, you know what I mean? Sure. But I loved it, and I tell all of our friends to do that, you know? Um, and even if you needed it during a marriage, like, there's nothing to be ashamed of, worried about anything. It's, it's communicating. And, and sure. like we said, communication, no matter what relationship you are in with a parent, um, a spouse, kids, friends, yeah. you have to communicate. So good. Um, <laughs> Emily, your authenticity is what obviously helps you continue to grow not only your business, but a great family. Um, obviously a good relationship and your community came up strong and it, it's been amazing bringing you in chatting with you getting to know you a little bit better when in March let's give a little shameless plug to the to the March yes. opportunity um, oh man it's like I- I don't know, March twenty yeah. first or something. I don't cool. know the dates. So, sorry, we'll check my in days March. are crazy. Like I by the time tomorrow. this airs, yeah. we'll have it. We'll have the link <laughs> inside of it. Yes, um, I mean. But no, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yes. This has been awesome, and I love your stance that you're taking for the body image uh, issues that you're going through now, right? Yes. And being able to stand up to cyberbullying is super important to be able to continue to sort of fence out all of others' opinions and still remain yourself throughout the process. So, man, I'm, I'm just a big fan of what you've got going on. It's awesome. Thank you. I'm a big fan of yours too. I think this is great. Like a podcast for the people. Charlotte needs new. it, right? Yes. Like, we need po- a podcast for it's the people. It's creative. It's, it's going to be great. Thank you, Emily. Yes. Thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.